Out. Rudolph insisted we stopped at Smith's to get some lettuce. <laughs> Poor guy was hungry. And the traffic lights there are terrible. It took hours. It's nice to be back in Park City though. All this snow, it's wonderful. Hello, young man. How are you? Do you know who I am? Santa Claus. Santa Claus? Well, it's, it's one of my names. Do you know how... See, basically, I'm Bishop St. Nicholas. But about three or four hundred years ago, St. Nicholas's birthday was always celebrated in Europe. And if you can speak Dutch, which I cannot, then if you say Niklas, it's Niklas, 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 Saint Niklas. And so St. Nicholas became Santa Claus. So now you know. Oh, it's amazing what you can find out on Google. <laughs> so basically, I'm St. Nicholas, and many, many years ago, 1,800 to be precise, so I think I'm the oldest person here, but that fellow looks pretty old. And, you know, Basically, I used to be a bishop. I was the bishop of Myra. And Myra is a little fishing village. It's on the border of Turkey and Greece. It's a very nice, quiet village. And in fact, I inherited a lot of money because my father was rich, but I gave it all away. And I used all my money to look after small children and to help educate the local people. And that's why I was made a bishop quite young. But I really loved the job of educating the children and telling them all the story of Jesus. Because back in those days, you know, Jesus was only born 300 years before I was. And telling the story of Jesus' birth was something that I decided to keep on doing as I grew up, and I was given the job. So, 1800 years later, that is my job. And I'm here to tell you the story of Jesus' birth. And so, if all the little children would like to come and sit in front of me, I'll take my place on that remarkably uncomfortable bishop's chair, and, and I will read the story to you. fine, but don't you want to look at me while I read? <laughs> I know I'm old and ugly, but that's just part of the show. So, let me dig out the story. If I get the beard out of my mouth, so this is the story of the birth of Jesus. A long time ago, in a busy town called Nazareth, there lived a young couple named Mary and Joseph. They were good, kind, and hard-working people, and they were engaged to be married. One day, God sent the angel Gabriel down to talk to them. Mary was very scared when Gabriel appeared out of nowhere. 
But the angel told her not to be frightened because he had a very special message for her. God had chosen her to be the mother of God's own son and that she will give birth to a baby boy. When the baby is born, then Mary and Joseph must call the name of the ba baby Jesus. Jesus will be the savior of the world and known as Emmanuel, which means God with us. And while I'm telling the story, at certain times, I'm going to sing a carol because carols, it's the way that people used to tell stories in the old days, they used to sing them. And carols are a nice way of remembering, you know, the story. You remember the, the music better than you remember the words. So this, this carol of uh, Gabriel, is written back in 1300, believe it or not. The angel Gabriel from heaven came, his wings as drifted snow, his eyes as flame. All hail, said he, thou lowly maiden Mary, most highly favored lady Gloria. for no a blessed mother thou shalt be all generations lord and honor thee thy son shall be later the Roman Emperor Augustus who ruled that land issued an order that all people must travel back to the town where they were born so that they could be counted Joseph set off on foot together with his pregnant wife Mary riding on a donkey the journey was long and Mary was very very weary but after many hours walking on the dusty roads and shortly before the sun set, they reached the little town of Bethlehem. Oh, little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie above thy deep and dreamless sleep the silent stars go by yet in thy dark street shineth the everlasting light the hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight Joseph went from door to door, looking for a room for them to spend the night. They knew that the time was close for the baby to be born. But there were so many travelers in town that all the rooms were taken and they were getting desperate. At last, one kindly landlord offered to let Joseph and Mary stay and rest in his stable. They would have to share the space with the animals but at least it was warm and dry. 
And they managed to get some rest despite the mooing of the cows and the baring of the sheep. Later that night, the baby was born. Mary carefully wrapped baby Jesus in swaddling clothes and placed him in a manger that Joseph had lined with straw to make it into a comfortable crib. Away in a manger. No, oh, I'm sorry. I just remembered I was told somebody was going to come and help me sing that carol. So, are they here? Ah, let us do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> So at least you know which carol we're going to sing. <laughs> but there's somebody who can do it much better than me, and I have a message. So if you'd like to come up and you know the way to get here, please do that. Some of you don't, if you share my last name, you don't have a choice. <laughs> but if you have a different last name, you can come up here. I'm going to grab my guitar and we'll do it just like we practiced. So I was going to sing. Yeah. All right, let's. Oh, great, it's working. So. If you're going to sing, come on up here right behind the mic and I'll be right behind you, Kenny. Stay here for the rest you, of you the story. You abandoned St. Nicholas. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was the carols are merely an interlude. They're not the end. Anyway, that was beautiful, children. Thank you very much. And that was the version of that tune, which or well, that song that we normally sing in England, as opposed to the version that you get over here. Anyway, so, where we are in the story, baby Jesus, God's own son, was now born and was here on earth. Even the animals knew it was a very special time and they stood silent watching him sleep. Outside, the peaceful darkness of the night sky was broken by the arrival of a new star in the heavens which quite suddenly cast a glow across the countryside. In the hills close to the inn, there was a group of shepherds who saw the star and wondered 
What was happening? What was so special about this night? Then an angel appeared and told the shepherds, I have good news of great joy. Go to the inn and there you will find the baby, Jesus, asleep in a manger. He is a savior for all people, Christ the Lord. Go and see for yourselves. Then go to your homes and tell your friends and all the other people in the town. While shepherds watched their flocks by night all seated on the ground, the angel of the Lord came down and glory shone around. Fear not, said he, for mighty dread had seized their troubled mind. Glad tidings of great joy I bring to you and all mankind. The shepherds were not quite sure what to do. Nothing like this had ever happened before. Was this all true? But they did what the angel had asked and hurried to the stable to see for themselves. They found everything just as the angel had told them. There was the baby Jesus peacefully lying in the manger and they were totally in awe of the angels above singing glory to God in the highest. Now they had seen the baby Jesus, the shepherds left the stable to go to their own homes, praising God and telling everyone they met about the wonderful sight they had just seen. Now, in a far away place, three wise men had also seen the new star brightly shining in the sky. And they knew that this star must be a sign from God that his son, the King of the Jews, was born. They quickly prepared for the long journey towards the east and they took with them gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. Mm -hmm. wise men offered their <coughs> gifts to Jesus and knelt by the manger to show their respect for the King of Kings and Lord of all. Jesus Christ is born. The wise men then left to travel back to their own lands and on their journey they spread the good news to everyone they met. And now we must all help spread the news of Jesus' birth. Christmas Day is his birthday. So, happy birthday, Jesus. So this is a story that you're going to hear every year at Christmas time. And because we all like birthday parties, we've got a very good excuse to remember the birth of Jesus. And one day, you'll be telling this story to your own children. So, that's the end of the story, children. You've been very good listeners, despite some interruptions. <laughs> <laughs> and you've been very attentive. And we've got one more carol for you. Erica, my wonderful helper, will sing the first verse.
So children, that's the end of our story. That's all the carols we've got. So it's time for me to move on. So thank you, Erica, for your help. Thank you, Shelley. Thank you, Manuel. Now, Manuel, when we were talking about this on the email, you said something about cookies and milk. Uh, where do I find those? <laughs> no cookies. Oh, not even vegan ones. <laughs> uh, well. Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn king Peace on earth and mercy mild Born and sin is reconciled Good afternoon, and welcome to all of you. This, I, this is my first go at this program. I think it's a stroke of genius. It's brilliant. We get to sing all the wonderful Christmas hymns that we know and love, and we get to fet our children with a wonderful visit from St. Nicholas, who's authentic as they can come. <laughs> Whether we are children, in fact, or at heart, this is the story that we all long for, isn't it? We long for the heart of a child. And maybe it's smart to let a ch the child, the child, lead us tonight. To let these sweet offerings pry our adult hearts open a crack in the bleak midwinter nights of some of our lives. To see, hear, and touch as children do. He has given us himself. He came then and comes now with only three words for us on his lips, for you and for me. I love you. And he continues, I love you not for any things you have done or left undone. He loves you I love you, he says, because of them. I come to love you out of the shadows. The nativity exists not in order to deliver any other message or principle or idea. No matter where you find new birth, the baby born anew in you, the nativity story exists to deliver Jesus into your arms. Question for you and me briefly, what do you and I want to do about that? We have been given Jesus to love as our own because he has owned us. How we choose to answer that on any given day will, as the ad men say, it will change your life. And so, may you bless and be a blessing as you celebrate the light of his coming this night, this afternoon, and always. 
we continue with our liturgy, with our prayers of the people. In peace we pay we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for all who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all the earth, and and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For all members of the Church around the world seeking to live lives of compassion and mercy. For all who have served God in this Church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. People in Ukraine, people suffering from the weather. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King and praise your name forever and ever. For all these requests, spoken and unspoken, we thank you. For hearing our prayers, Lord, give us the faith to love you with all our hearts, minds, and souls, to love our neighbors as ourselves, and to be your voice and hands in service to the world. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Would you greet one another a joyful Noel, Christmas, in any language you choose. Greet one another in the name of the Lord. I hesitate to say, are there announcements? <laughs> there is one announcement, and I invite you to lend me your ears. And uh, it's, it's how we celebrate and receive communion uh, in this congregation. As you can probably imagine, it grew out of the COVID uh, epidemic, and we are still in practicing that way of receiving communion. So. Um, we are going, at this service, I'm hoping we have two stations here at the front, okay? Composed of two people each station, which means two here and two here. Um, I'm ad-libbing, okay? So, um, 
So you have a choice of two options, which is what a choice is. You have bread and wine or bread and grapefruit juice. No, not grapefruit juice, grape juice, please. Let's do at least what Jesus tried to do. So, so there will be two trays, and one will be marked wine, and the other, on the other side, will be marked grape juice. Those are the choices for the evening. Normally, we've had, we've had before up to five choices, but um, to just make this manageable, we have two choices this evening. Now, the ushers will um, help you. Um, you don't really need any help. Maybe they just need to say, it's your turn, and your rows simply come out this way, uh, pass by the two, um, the two servers. You take this little plastic cup. If you turn it over, it has bread on one side and wine or grapefruit juice, grape juice on the other. I don't know, I, I hate grapefruit, but um, uh, on the other, okay? Now, if you come from some traditions, you would stand there and just open it right away and take it. That's not the way we do it because we receive communion together. So if you would just simply take a container, go around the side and return to your places and wait until all have received, until all have received a container and then we will receive communion together. I will simply say the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, and we, we, we take the, the, uh, the top off that, the, the side of the container and take the bread, flip it over, and we say, do the same with the cup. I hate to ask, are there any questions? <laughs> <laughs> so, I do not fear, we will receive communion today. And after, and after the reception of communion, what may happen, we're not trying to take communion or Jesus away from you, but the ushers will be by to get your cups. Empty cups, thank you for not leaving them in the pews or on the uh, cushions, okay? Thank you. Um, are there any other announcements that can be said in two minutes? Do we need to, anything else to know? Okay. All right. Okay. On this holy night, when we celebrate the divine generosity of God who gives himself to us, let us with gladness present the offerings of our life and our labors unto the Lord.
up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. And gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to, to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. communion is found on the back page of your leaflet. The Lord be with you. 
and also with you. Let us pray together. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that I not so much seek to be consumed as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. And the blessing of God, whose love called light and darkness, mystery and wonder, to be with you this day. The blessing of God, whose love entered this world, vulnerable, naked and helpless, be with you always. And the blessing of Almighty God, whose love burns in your heart, transforming your living, send you into the world to be the, the incarnation of God's love for others in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Rejoice, for on this night a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah. Yeah. 